Whenever we shoot vids together and I let you turn the camera on uh -huh. while I turn on the screen recorder, uh -huh. I have to like pause because my husband is a three, two, one, pause, go person, not a three, two, one, go person. If I'm not in a race, I'm not starting right when you say go. Why? Um, what do you think? What do you think? Life. My thought no, process no, no. is I got when it. I say go. I got it. I got it. Don't worry. It's not me thinking about what you're thinking. That's the go right now. Go people. They're like, what you think that I think when I think? Ain't no thinking. Life is like jelly. You know what I'm saying? It only goes in one way. What? So don't worry about it. It just is how it is. My wife wanted to share that. I wanted to share this. A perfectly round carved cantaloupe. Look at that. Why didn't you want to portion it out? I'm not eating like a caveman. There you go. No, thank you. All right. Who goes out? So anyways, we're here for this video. <laughs> Today we're here for Zafrank. Frank. Uh, the title of this is The Science of Real Life Superpowers. And I would just like to be clear that I feel like he's going to address octopodes and I'm here for it. I had to think about that. I was like, my first thought was like octopuses and I was like, no. Let's do it. If you want to hide in plain sight, there's a couple ways to go about it. You can commit to a body that looks like oh, what's yeah, around so you, cool. but good luck if you want a change of scenery. You mm. can do the octopus thing and match yeah. your background on the fly, but who the f*** knows how to do that except the aliens that brought them here? <laughs> or transparency, right? Let the background pass right through you. That's like what I'm about to say, like, Real life invisibility. Fucking yeah. Sanji's losing his mind right now. <laughs> You're living his dream. Low effort, works anywhere, seems like a shoe in But there are some hurdles to overcome. Light moves through things at different speeds. A measure of how fast is called a refractory index. True. If you're made of something with a very different refractory index than your surroundings, light will change direction or scatter when it passes through, so really causing invisible. the background to distort. And right. then you can be see-through but still seen, see? Now things that live in water <laughs> yeah. have a leg up on this because the refractory index of water is close to living tissue, which is also mostly water. And there's a number of creatures that do it down there. This nudibranch is pretty impressive. The glass shark here, which is almost impossible I'm to sorry, see because it's where? bullshit and I just made it up. Oh, okay. But anyways, even in... <laughs> was like, I was ready. We were, I was looking. We, I, was like, we, I was like, I don't know everything about the ocean. In, I'm into we it. We leaned in slowly like, where is it at? Where is this shark at? It's not that simple being transparent. Anemone shrimp, for example, can take some eye rubbing to focus on. But things start to fall apart if they get too much exercise from flipping that little tail about. Hmm. When it does, its transparent abdominal muscles get flooded with its transparent blood uh, or hemorrhoids. Uh, and that causes enough differences in the refractory indexes of that area that light cool. scatters and screws up the see through itnessness. Right. And then, of course, you have all the classic invisible man problems. Here's the water fleet Daphnia showing off the food slash poop invisibility huh. paradox. That's a staple argument for 10 year olds everywhere. Not that much you can do about the poop shoot except not eat, but they can do something about that eye. Daphnia that live in water where there's a lot of fish about have smaller eyes, which seem to help them avoid detection. Uh -huh. It does seem like being partially or mostly transparent still helps to avoid a predator. The glass-winged butterfly, for example, has some of the most impressive transparency of a land animal. Those transparent parts still have scales on them, by the way. What the hell are we looking at? A microscopic view of the glass-winged butterfly's wings. What the hell? <laughs> it's like we went from looking at animals, looking at like wiring for like a, <laughs> on a circuit board. It looks or like something. you're about to solder something. Yeah, like so this is where the which they need to shun the water. But look, they're reduced into little pool noodles. Denser pigmented scales near the edge of the wing absorb light and are dark, which you'd think would screw the whole thing up, but it's been shown that the package is enough to reduce predict. What? What are you doing? The proboscis. <laughs> <laughs> I just really hate butterfly faces. Oh, the faces are horrific. Yeah, they're like, they're beautiful till you get to the face part. If you could just like cut the head off of a butterfly and it still be alive, it'd be more acceptable to me. I hate how like the butterfly thighs look. They're like fused together <laughs> at the abdomen. 
and then the legs protrude out yeah. to the side. That's so alien to me. Mark, which you'd think would screw the whole thing up, but it's been shown that the package is enough to reduce predation. Mm. Now, the glass frog is more like a stained glass frog. That's cool. It's a bit of a stretch to call it you transparent. Do. Certainly frog translucent. I mean, for one thing, it's green, which isn't terrible since it spends 99 point f*** it all of its life on a green <laughs> yeah. leaf. So yeah. it doesn't really need to worry about changing colors or textures. He just looks so chill. He's hanging out, bro. They look so chill. Yeah. I feel like this is an intimate moment that we shouldn't be watching. They're just hugging. Just innocent hugging. They just hug their buds. <laughs> But the partial see-throughness does help with blending into how light or dark the background is. And the slightly more see-through extremities, like its legs, can make it hard for a predator to figure out where the leaf stops and the food begins. Yeah, that's cool. However, the glass frog has its own version of the Invisible Man problem. Blood. Red blood cells are very good at absorbing light. Which means you can see veins, but also a big-ass beating heart, yeah. which is like a bullseye for a predator. Yeah. When they're awake, there's not much to do about it, but they're aware and can still escape if detected. Mm. But when they sleep, they're especially vulnerable, sleep and they have one a eye open, homie. Their red blood cells move into little pockets in their Whoa. liver. They hide. <laughs> and this makes them two to three times more transparent than when they're awake and exercising. <laughs> it doesn't work if you anesthetize them, by the way, so you'll huh. still see a drunk frog. Only when they go to sleep correctly. Got and then when it. you wake them back up, the red blood cells come back out to play. Okay. Wow. That's the deal with superpowers. There's always some crap That's you have to deal that with you cool. didn't think about. You gotta hide your blood cells. It's bullshit. That is dope. Hiding blood cells, dude? Something that, like, only serves you if you're invisible. Yeah. Like, me yeah. hiding my own blood cells wouldn't help me at all. Unless there were vampires around. Well, but even so, I feel like a vampire would kill me just like to get guy, to my veins. It's like that guy in anime that can, like, move his organs around. You know what I mean? Yeah. You stabbed me in my gut, but then I moved my organs or I made a hole <laughs> in the foot. But... Eat. In Snakes. terms of superpowers, you'd think that the boa constrictor has it fairly straightforward. Squeezing power Super squeeze. is just one of those awkward hugs that goes on for too long brought to its logical conclusion. Just coil the first third of your body around something that's a, and... That's a, uh, a rodent. It's a bunny. It's dying. How do you feel about that? I can't see it, so it's okay. You can see the foot. You see the back? Uh, it's just bundles of fur. Okay. Know? So it you could... could... Be, it could be a fur coat. You could kill a rabbit if you didn't have to see the face first. If I didn't know that it was a rabbit, I could kill a rabbit. Really? A monster. <laughs> and squeeze it so tight that it can't breathe. Simple, right? All right, well, while it's doing that, how does the so, snake breathe? Platypus? God damn it. F***ing fine print. They had to I'm figure no that idea. one out. Let me explain. Now, snake insides get a bit weird. They gotta cram That's it all insane. into that tube. Look at that, it's got staggered testicles. Put on a blindfold and try to miss, you'd still kick a snake in the nuts. You ah. know what they call this? An anal scale. I'm not Googling that. Don't even want to know how much mine weighs. <laughs> if you don't Google it, who will? You're the man we right. go to you're to the, Google Right, you're the this. anal scale Googler. Yeah, this, the, we need you for that. <laughs> I'm not gonna Google it, you Google it. Your search history is already fucked up. Exactly. You're already on the FBI watch list. They think I'm just really smart and are into animal <laughs> facts. They don't know I know about poop soups. These things up here are the lungs. The left lung, if they even have it, is just a little janky if they stump. they have it. But the right lung here goes down a third of the way. So their lung is right under the part that they use to squeeze. Now to get around this and not black out every time they have lunch, boa constrictors have evolved ribs that can move independently. Look at this, okay. you put a blood pressure cuff around one section of the lung, and an area farther back takes over the breathing. If you put the cuff on the farther back spot, the front <clears throat> takes over the breathing. Got and look, it. the section in between isn't moving. These are like breathing zones. Mm -hmm. And you can actually see this in action when oh, a boa no. captures prey. The mouse here oh, is already is dead. After about three and a half oh. minutes of squeezing, you can see that the snake has moved its breathing to two sections in the back. As it starts to release, a pretty long section comes back online. And here's the thing, when it's done with the constriction the and starts to swallow its breath. prey whole, it also has to move where it breathes from, because now the prey is exerting pressure from the inside. Mm -hmm. And in fact, it's thought that this ability evolved first oh, as a means of swallowing large prey, right. which only then allowed snakes to evolve constriction as a form of hunting. That's so, a yawning. So like, we're talking millions of dead snakes killing themselves by eating. <laughs> And then evolution's like, I got this, bro. Just hold on. We're working on something here. 
I would hate to be the guy that like partially blacks out, but like not enough to die. Right. So my existence is just almost death every time I eat. Yeah. Yeah. Every time your friends watch you like, ha, ah, look, he's about to eat again. Watch him. Watch him. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, I just made you yawn, motherfucker. No, not Did I yet. Yawn? All right. We'll wait. The velvet worm split off from the velvet arthropods worm. about 500 million years ago. I'm starting to like Now, they've things. been evolving just as long as the rest of us. Yeah. Now, at first glance, it might not look like they've been using right. that time all that effectively. Just doesn't look like they've got that much going on. <laughs> Here's one shown to scale in an unnecessarily threatening way. Yeah. Anyway, you know what they've been working on for 500 million look at years? Spider-Man, basically. Me, but like me, real me. and without the movie franchise. And let me tell you, to get there, they had to do quite some creative problem solving. That's kind of cool. The velvet worm might look like a Muppet caterpillar, but it's quite <laughs> complex. It just does things its own way. Like walking, for example. Velvet worms are basically fluid-filled sacks. So no skeleton, no joints, but plenty of muscle. Right. To move a pair of those inflatable legs, it squeezes and elongates a body segment, which lifts the legs and swings it's them so forward. Cute. Repeat that in a wave down your body and you're off to the races. Looks like you got a little TP stuck to a heel there. Oh, no. It seems like what happened is that a pair of these legs up front evolved into those slime cannons. Mm -hmm. And here's roughly how it all works. Here's the inside of a velvet worm, and you can see its oh, slime thanks. glands. Thanks Very a lot. Pretty. The slime Appreciate is secreted it. up in the shaggy bits there, and then yeah. it's stored down in the reservoir, which is French for reservoir. The mm, reservoir the is up. surrounded <laughs> by a muscle. And it's a cool looking muscle too, all crissy crossy like a reinforced radial tire. I can and see the that. job of this muscle is to squeeze the slime out. The problem is, velvet worm muscles can't contract all that quickly. So without a little help, the slime would just come out like a dribble. <laughs> Think Spider-Man with leakage. But as anyone who's melted a pin into the top of a shaving cream can on Halloween knows, a small enough hole can turn a dribble do? into it. What does that anyone do? Anyone who has done what? What does that do? Someone explain to me what that does. I want to try it. Never mind, we will just try it. We'll get back to you. That sounds spectacularly unsafe. Yeah, we'll do it. <laughs> to the top of a shaving cream can on Halloween nose. Yeah. A small enough hole can turn a dribble into a squirt with dist- This sounds like pornography. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> that's what they do. The slime is squeezed out of the reservoir and into this funnel, which ends in one of these modified legs or papillae. Got and then it shoots it. out the little papillae. hole at the end of it. But if you look at the slime, it doesn't come out in a straight line. It's all over the place. Yeah, that spreads yeah, it yeah, out yeah. and totally covers that giant paintbrush of doom. And it does this by moving its papillae back and forth papillae. really fast. <laughs> Actually, too fast. They move about 20 times Ew. faster than their muscles can contract. And the way really? they do this is by harnessing floppy power. All right, so if you take a floppy <laughs> tube and pass <laughs> fluid through it, at low speeds, the fluid comes out straight. But as the fluid moves faster, there's a point at which the tube becomes unstable. And the whole thing goes wonky. <laughs> this is like a runaway garden hose. So in real life, Spider-Man doesn't have so much of a precision shot. It's more of a... <laughs> and you know what? The velvet worm slime is water-soluble. They don't tell you what happens to all the webs in Spider-Man. <laughs> there's probably some dude that he hires to follow him around with a mop. Cleaning Can't it just up. let it sit there. It starts to stink. Oh. They they actually did talk about it in the uh, animated version. Did they? That the webs do dissolve. Because as a kid, it distressed me. And as, you know, that in-between age, we start having thoughts. Yeah. I was like, he's ruining the city. So like, okay, does it dissolve like in water or does it dry up and then this disintegrate? Is, this is uh, cartoon logic. It goes away. Okay. Okay. I was hoping during the video when I saw it do this, yes. that it was uncontrolled floppage. Yeah. Right? Just the windmill. Because like, yeah. it can't think. It doesn't know how goofy right. that looks, you know? And it's pretty effective. It's cute. Just enough stability to get there. But also, if like I came across a velvet worm and it did that to me, I'd be so angry. It's <laughs> like when you catch ladybugs and then they pee on you and you're like, you little bitch. Like, yeah. I'm here admiring your beauty and you piss on me. Do you kill them after? Yes or no? I really want to know. Uh, thanks for joining me for this video. Who kills ladybugs? Thanks for joining me in the video. Uh, I'm going to continue drilling a hole in this cantaloupe that I perfectly rounded to eat. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Peace.